Hello everyone and welcome back to NPC Dungeon. As usual, I have a little story for you. I just recently finished telling the story of probably one of my favorite campaigns I've ever ran just last week. So feel free to check that out on the playlist to that series if you like. I'll leave a link and a card to it as always. Today's story, on the other hand, follows my players in the current campaign that I'm running right now as they break into a mansion of all places in the most hilarious and chaotic way possible. So let's get started. So what happened? Well, you might know from previous videos, this campaign takes place entirely underground in the city of Volgaldir, which was founded many years ago after the surface world became uninhabitable, forcing people underground. The dwarves were the first to burrow beneath the ground, and so they ended up running many of the cities found below. In fact, there was a ball coming up in which many of these families were to meet and discuss. These lands were already occupied by slime people, and they now want it back. A certain group of these oozes calling themselves the Slime Liberation Front noticed something going on in a mine owned by the group gravedigger dwarven family at which many oozes unfortunately must work. Many oozes are being forced from their jobs and countless construction and excavation projects had been going on with no real explanation. One of my players, Gum, was an ooze and actually had connections with this group and it was through Gum that the Slime Liberation Front contacted my players including the humanoid Cleo and the drow rogue V and asked them to investigate and this is where we begin. So let's start with a question. If you give your players a mine and tell them to investigate, what would you usually expect them to do? Go to a mine? That is not what my players did. After exploring around the mire, which is the colloquial name given to the district of the city where many slam individuals have had to live in recent years, it's kind of derogatory and it just stuck unfortunately, they learned that many oozes are actually skipping town and finding work out in the underground wilds outside of the city, the dangerous areas where mutated monsters live and hunt. They also learned that Avat Gravedigger, the patriarch of the Gravedigger family and owner of the mines, also has his hands in businesses owned by other dwarven families, the Soil Forged family specifically, but there are no recorded documents outlining his associations with them. Whatever he was doing, it was off the books. That along with the fact that it was often seen in the company of a particular local thieves guild aggravated my players' suspicions more than a little bit. They couldn't find a way immediately into the mines, so they went straight to the top, to Prominence Peak, a high up plateau where many dwarven figures happened to live. This section was gated off and heavily guarded, so they had to lie their way in, saying they actually had a meeting with Avat Gravedigger. One of the guards, a younger, much more wiry looking figure, was suspicious suspicious, didn't believe them, and was about to turn them away when the other, a much older, more experienced one said, oh come on, let them through, what harm could they do? Oh how wrong that guard was. My players passed the Soil Forge estate, an old rickety looking building several years into disrepair, the kind children might tell ghost stories about, before coming across a tall domed building flanked by towers on either side and surrounded by a wide gated metal fence. You better believe my players were going to break in. They could see a guard patrolling the ground in the distance, but when they passed behind one of the towers, my players took their chance. Gum used their acidic form to begin and taking the gate off its hinges, but it wasn't long before the guard passed back around. Hey, they shouted, you're not supposed to be over there. The party's instinct was to hold the gate up like nothing was wrong, but it soon became clear the guard wasn't leaving. Gum began slowly pulling out their club, ready to bonk this guard over the head if need be, but Cleo had this covered. She put on her best scowl and looked up with the guard. It's your fault we're here, she said. If you're doing a better job, we wouldn't have gotten this close. I need to speak to your manager. The guard, frightened, actually began to shake and sputter as Cleo continued. Gum chuckled a little before realizing that but now is the chance. Apparently forgetting that they were amorphous for a second, they shook their head and simply squeezed through the bars. Hey, wait, what? Get out of here, called the guard as they called over one of their superiors. Finally, a manager, said Cleo. Two more ran out and began chasing after Gum, who was now bolting for the tower. Gum slipped under the door as the two guards burst through and began running up the stairs, but Gum was ready. Gum waited, taunting the guards. They smacked the wall and the floor with their club, but the guards wouldn't take the bait. So Gum finally got frustrated, looked around the small room they were in, found a chest, and threw it down the stairs. One loud crunch and a cry of pain later and there was just one pair of footsteps now. That wasn't Gum's intent, but they weren't complaining. Meanwhile, Cleo threw her shield at one of the guards approaching her, knocking them out. The other, she basically yelled at into submission until they rolled one and passed out. They searched their bodies and found small stone tablets, magical comms devices that they were able to communicate with. She was in the system. She had no problem taking advantage of that, sending bogus commands and heavily disorganizing their adversaries. And of course, let's not forget about V. While this is going on, she began to feel 
a little bit like a babysitter. At least she remembered why they were there. So she used her roguish stealth and snuck up through the grounds, climbing up the tower until she was high above Gum. Stepping inside, she was able to see an open window across the way leading into the mansion. There was her way in. She grabbed her rope, threw it across, grappling the other side, and was ready to swing when the tower began to shake. Gum, far below, had certainly attracted the attention of the other guards. They ran up, but could not have been ready for what they were about to encounter. Gum's form swelled up and expanded as they filled the interior of the room, trapping the guard inside and encasing them in Gum's corrosive form. Their slime body reached the walls and strained against their stone surface until they gave away and crumbled, blowing out as the upper half of the tower collapsed and fell in towards the rest of the mansion. V had to take her chance, holding on as the tower plummeted and leaping off to swing across into the window. She caught her breath and turned back around to see what had happened. Gum stood in the opening, now showing in the break in the tower, holding the guard over the edge, still caught in their acidic grasp. Avat, Gravedigger, they said. Where are they? I think he's out today, the guard sputtered, but his office is on the first floor. I'm not allowed on the second floor, so I don't know what's over there. What do you want from me? But Gum simply ignored their pain screams. What do you know of Avat's dealings? Nothing, I swear, just that they've been real busy after the remodeling of the Soilforged plant. Soilforged. So the rumors were true. There, I told you, buttered the guard. Now can I go? Nope, said Gum simply as they shoved the guard back into their form and moved on to the first floor, sliding down the part of the tower that had fallen over and into the gap left into the mansion, down to the first floor. Okay, V said to herself as she made a mental note to never get on Gum's bad side. If Gum was going to the first floor, she took it upon herself to explore the second. She snuck from room to room, hiding and checking doors before coming to a locked room. Being a rogue, it wasn't hard for her to open it up. Inside were two dwarven figures, figures anyone in Volgold Ear would recognize, the forms of Art and Soil Forged, and his daughter, Adrin, chained up against a wall. They ran many of their family's industries together, but what were they doing here? V was especially confused since they had already confirmed their presence at the upcoming ball, but these two said they never did. Apparently, they were checking up on one of their research projects to explore the surface when they were kidnapped and brought here. V freed them and led them outside as Gum stood alone in the lobby awaiting challenging guards, still carrying the bones of the last one in their translucent torso. Cleo caught up and used her comms to bring all the guards she could there as she snuck off and made her way to Avat's office. Inside, there was a book of schematics and logistical information for the Soil Forged Hydroponics Establishment, the water-based magical farms owned by the Soil Forged family. But there was also a note locked away in a safe on the desk, but it was written in code. She didn't know what it was, but it had to have something useful on it. Besides, she might know someone who could help, so she tucked it away and made off. By the time they got back to Gum, their now enlarged slam companion had already bowled over the guards that showed up, absorbing them into their form. They met V outside of their new friends, who by now were more than a little bit suspicious. It took some convincing, but they did eventually decide to come with them. When they exited the building, they had seen that a crowd gathered outside, a crowd that Gum simply frightened away. They climbed down the shaded side of the plateau, landing in an alley, and made off. Now, however, they had to be careful. Even though V had snuck off and Gum was about as nondescript a slime as there ever was, Cleo's face was still seen. Where to lay low now? And that's that. That one definitely got way out in left field, but it was a lot of fun to run, and I hope I did it justice. A lot happened in it, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out this week's other video. It's all about taking notes as a player, and come back next week where I'll talk about one of a DM's favorite things, playing little pranks on your players, how to and especially how not to do it. I'll also talk a little bit about a Kinku Detective that I played not too long ago, and as always, thanks so much for watching, until next time, let's learn something.